Hello. Right, so I'm going to show you guys how you can um, make your own materials and save them to the material pack to use for any other project. So, if you want to download this, this from a website, you'll get these two um, files here in a zip. This material library will take you to where the add-on materials are. So these are all the ones that are already in the pack. I'm going to show you how to make your own one in here. So let's, let's um, go back to where it was. So the first thing you might want to do is go to the material library shortcut. Make a new folder and call this my materials or whatever you want to call it. So we've got that folder there. You can go back and I want to open this material maker.blend file. And then we're going to make an example texture here, but we're going to use PBRs because PBRs is quite a common one to use. So when you open the file, it will look like this. You want to change, first of all, the viewport to viewport shading at the top up here. Um, viewport shading rendered so this is the one you want to be on so you can see exactly what's going on and then in this example file here we've got the albedo which is also the color we've got the ambient occlusion which is the as the ambient shadows and daisy we've got the height we've got the metallic we've got the normal we've got pbrs oh that's the example that's a preview of what it should look like i don't need that in there <laughs> and then we've got the um the roughness so we're going to start with the albedo. You simply just drag the, your images into here like this. And you'll get the image in the node panel here. You click that and drag it to color. So it looks like crap right now. So we're going to control T on here. You need node wrangler installed. On, well, not installed, but enabled. It's, a, it's part of Blender. So go to edit preferences, add-ons, and search for node wrangler. And make sure it's checked and turned on. So then, once you've got that, you, you click on your images, press Control T, and what it'll do is it'll it'll let you set the scale and stuff like this. So I'm going to set it like that for now. What happens if I set that to object and change the scale again? No, it goes weird. I'm going to go back to UV again. I, I, I'd like to mess with these because sometimes you might get a different result. So I'm going to set that like that. So that's I'm happy with that. Um, yep, let's. Minimize this albedo so it's nice and clean, like so. Also, if you want to have um, all these linked up to something even cleaner, you press Shift A to bring up the search. Go to Layout and type and click on the reroute one. And you click that there, and then to move this, you've got to click on it, press G, and move your mouse to where you want it to be. So I'm going to put it about here because I'm going to have different images coming off of this. So now. Instead of connecting every image to this one, you can make it look a bit tidier by... You can put them like so. I'm just showing you how to make it look a bit tidier, just for your own sanity. So we've got the albedo in. Let's go for what's next on the list. Metallic and roughness. So we'll do the metallic one. Drag that in. Get this dot here. Connect it to the vector. Connect that to the metallic. And uh, turn that one to minimize. Uh, minimize that one, sorry. I don't know what I'm pressing here. Alt-Tab. Next one is roughness. So again, drag this in. Cut the purple dot up. I'm going to minimize it. It's the yellow one is the output for the color, by the way. Like so. And we get the normal map. Uh, purple to the vector. Color to the normal. So right now we're not seeing much difference in this. So wait till we get this um, the height map in there. So this should change a lot of it. The height map. Oh wait, we've got the ambient shadows first. Let's bring this one in. AO. Vector. And what was the last one? The height map. Let's bring this down here. Get that up. And that's way too strong. So let's tweak it until you get something that you like. So there's your texture. And then again in the mapping, if you expand it and press Shift A. Search for value, and then this. If you connect this to your scale, you can control this and it will control the scale easier for you. So, so there's that. And then, if you're happy with this texture, which I'm not super happy, it could look better, I think, but because we're working with sort of flat images in Blender, in Daisy, I mean, sorry, this is the best probably we're going to get. So, once you have this all set up. And you're happy with this. You want to right click up here. Oh, you want to name this first. So what should we call this? Um, 
what the hell even is this? I'll just call this example. Example, no. Green windows. And then it's got also, in your name, it has to have this um, daisy texture. Like hyphen daisy texture in the end of it. Just so the texture baker recognizes it and stuff as a daisy texture. So once you've done that, you right click it and you mark as an asset. Then you go to file, save as. Uh, double click on this material library, it'll take you to the correct folder. And then, what, what do we call it? My materials. And then in here, you want to give it the same name as your material. So do that. Paste it in there and save. Like so. And then with this again, you press F12 now. And it should render, render your image for you. Like so. And then you go to image. Save as. And you're already in your materials. Just paste the name of the texture again. Like so. And then in your material pack now, if you refresh, you should have my materials and you have this and apply it. There we go. So I can apply it to the background just to show you that that's how that works. Maybe not. If I click on the background, it might work. There you go, guys. That's how you save your own material and have it show up in here. So if you have any questions or you get stuck on anything, also you can close this now and then um, in the folder again, this one here will still be the same. It'll still be basic, so you can start making your own ones again. But if you overwrite that one, you'll have to download it again from the texture pack. Let me try and do this real quick for you, sorry, actually. So I'm going to go to the final render. And I'm going to save it like that. And then if I close it, hopefully it will come back as that. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. This one. So that should automatically go into material preview. I tried this earlier, but it didn't work correctly. Yeah, it keeps going back to this by default. So... When you first open the file, always check this last box up here. If you don't see this, by the way, so save your windows like this. You have to you have to roll your mouse wheel to get to the end like this. But your window should open like this, and it should be ready to go, ready to bake, ready to create. So again, if you get stuck, try watch this video again, or jump in the Discord and open the ticket.